Hello, welcome back to part two of the dev kit as your stack. Uh, dev kit, and we covered earlier who, what, when, and where, and why we uh, need it. And then we moved on to some of the scenarios. And then for today, we will basically move to the architecture of it. So, what we have to cover here. We have to cover uh, how we can integrate and the requirements around it. So without further ado, let's we jump into the first uh, part. Uh, component minimum requirements recommendation, a disk drive for OS. We need a general Azure stack for POCing, CPU, RAM, BIOS, network card. And most important part is need to be HW logo certified hardware to be utilized at least with Windows 2012 R2. That will be the minimal requirements yeah then if we start from the second column one uh, like c1 os disk with 200 gp either options will work for us like ssd or hhd or hdd or four disk for the pocing and dual socket cpu at least look at the ram 96 gp ram so this is the minimal requirement again recommendation is uh, 128 ram and 16 uh, uh, dual sockets so this is very strong if you think about it logically that server needs to be a powerful server it's like the old days when we used to host a vmware or it could be hyper v uh, you know the host itself that will be applicable here and then you can see there uh, the bios uh, hyper v enabled with the uh, slot supported this is the recommendation at least 2012 r2 certified uh, will be required Move on to the next. The hardware consideration ensure you have the minimal or minimum number of disk uh, consistent across you know the servers with the uh, type size and uh, basically uh, a simple space which create less than eight data disk under two terabyte and ensure the sufficient RAM at least you said like uh, ninety six will not adequately support the deployment of additional resource so you need to jump into 128 and the last part is the networking and VPN across uh, uh, zero stack is not supported through nothing method so what about the network site single connection will be required uh, reserved network ranges uh, will be needed for the info uh, storage HNV external VIP and transit network resource endpoint and at the moment is uh, ipv4 soon will be six uh, it is in poc at the moment or let's just say like in preview key difference uh, border gateway nothing virtual machine is deployed which does not support multi-node approach no switches are required and either static or dynamic you can recommendation using static required for additional parameters we move to the next part which is the multi-node difference around scalability resiliency and networking one node where all the infrastructure and tenant uh, vms they exist in the, and resiliency will be mirrored for storage configuration and same thing we spoke about earlier about the network and bgp nothing this is like a very common architecture you can see the link there again azure stack azure stack architecture where you can find this slide and uh, you know drawing if you are interested in now using a dev kit uh, wisely making sure like uh, a non-production deployment of azure stack a great place to start you can deploy your own uh, host and you can give you the first impression what the tool is not it's not production hosting ready it's assuming scalability beyond standard boundaries and assuming uh, it is highly available so all these please make sure you cover this what is it and what is the kit is not basically yeah this is the uh, components uh, stack storage surface adfs for single sign-on uh, routers cas servers uh, aad gateway network card i'm not going to read all of this in details but just to show you what is it and all the way to the controller of the stack again the diagram drawing all are available under the link from microsoft azure stack architecture but this is just like a high level to cover to 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 us what the roles will look like and how they basically sit together and how the traffic uh, 
fly through you know each one of these components to from like layer uh, lower layer to the upper layer and so on that's all what I had for you for today. Let's we jump in. Next session is around basically the deployment task. So earlier we convert, uh, what is it? Who will be using it? What benefit and whom and when? This session we cover the architecture from high level perspective. Next we will cover the installation task offered. Thank you for watching and goodbye for now.